Okay. Good morning, and thank you for being here this morning, and thank you for your continued interest in what's happening in Spalding County. Chairman Knight and I um, share Spalding County. We are the delegation for, for what happens in Spalding County. And today, we're going to bring you up to date on our election failures and the issues associated with not only our De uh, November 3rd election, but the continuing election into the, into the runoff. These issues are very serious, and Chairman Knight and myself, our constituents deserve better than what's happening in Spalding County today. Specifically, what, what we will be bringing you up to date on are the ballots that were used on November 3rd, provisional ballots, and the rules and regs that surround that, the training of our poll managers, which is super, super important, chain of custody of those ballots that were used on November 3rd, and also the board meetings that have occurred post November 3rd that this board has had to correct some of these issues and they have continued to not correct and not call out some issues that, that could have been corrected. So with that, um, the other thing that I would like to, to remind you of, there we will have a press release after that you can um, see the rules and regs and the, the laws surrounding the issues that Chairman Knight are, going, are speaking of. Chairman Knight. Thank you, Representative Mathiak. Um, as as uh, Representative Mathiak just stated, I want to go through with you what actually occurred on November the 3rd uh, and some of the issues uh, that have occurred since that is related to it. Many of you know this. You were covering the story on Election Day. Um, Spalding County voters woke up those who wishing to cast their ballots in person uh, at the polls were greeted by every polling precinct being down as far as the voting system. Um, immediately, as you as y'all covered and stated in your news release, uh, the Spalding County uh, Chairman of the uh, Spalding County Elections Board, along with the Spalding County Election Supervisor, stated that there was a last minute update to the software which caused the glitch in the system. I find that to be uh, incorrect. Um, furthermore, uh, the Secretary of State has reviewed the logs. Uh, no one had uh, uh, gone into that system. Uh, the last time someone was in that system was October 31st, uh, and no one had entered into that system uh, uh, on election eve or that night. Furthermore, I want to make sure that you understand what are the Secretary of, uh, of State rules and regs regarding logic and accuracy testing, okay? And these, uh, there will be a link uh, to the rules of the Secretary of State, but under that section of logic and accuracy testing, it says the superintendent shall cause the accuracy of all components to be tested causing the following task to be performed. Specifically to the poll books which are in question. Check that the electronic poll books accurately look up, check in voters via both the scanning function and the manual lookup, and create a voter access card that pulls up correct, the correct ballot on the electronic ballot marker for every applicable ballot style. That is the function uh, of the poll book and that was the testing requirements. Furthermore, it goes down to say that if any component fails any testing, the component shall not be used in the primary election or runoff until such unit is repaired, inspected, and found capable of proper functioning and passes the logic and accuracy test. Furthermore, it states that the component shall then be sealed and secured, uh, securely stored for transfer before, uh, until they are transferred to the polling places. So under the rules of the Secretary of State, I find it impossible to believe the story that there was a last minute update to the system. I believe that the statements coming both from the chairman of the Spalding County Election Board and the election superintendent herself 
uh, to be uh, baseless and, quite frankly, uh, unbelievable. Second of all, Secretary of State, as, as has been mentioned in the earlier press release uh, that we uh, jointly issued uh, with him calling for the resignation of the election superintendent, it stated that there were backup procedures that were to be used. Even in the fatal failure of the system that morning, there were backup procedures that if the poll workers had been trained to follow these procedures, the election still would have come off and the, and the people who showed up that day to cast their ballot in, in person would have been able to cast that ballot in person and run it through the scanning machine. That did not happen. Those backup procedures, uh, as you'll see in the press release, are on the Secretary of State's training manual. I believe that was dated August 2020. On page 71 and 72, those backup procedures are for when a poll pad will not encode voter cards. It lays it out step by step. And on the next page, it's using emergency paper ballots. And this is very important because the election supervisor um, <clears throat> called for all of the poll manage managers to issue provisional ballots. I want to repeat provisional ballots. However, that is incorrect, and it disenfranchised the voters, the valid voters, who showed up that day, pro were properly ID'd, and verified that they were in the correct polling place. And I want to read to you, again, part of the actual rules and regs. It says, if emergency situation makes utilizing the electronic ballot markers impossible or impractical, as determined by the election superintendent, the poll officer shall issue the voter and emergency ballot that is to be filled out with pen after verifying the identity of the voter and that that person is a registered voter of the precinct. And here's the key. Emergency paper ballots shall not be treated as provisional ballots, but instead shall be placed into the scanner in the same manner that printed ballots in the polling place are scanned. That is law and it is Secretary of State rule and reg. Those voters who showed up when the machines were not working should have been given emergency ballots or the, ballot, the paper ballots should have been treated as emergency ballots and they should have been scanned into the scanners. What this does is it points to a lack of training from the election supervisor to the poll managers. I've personally spoken with many of them through statements and even seen their affidavits. They had no clue that there was even an emergency ballot backup procedure, nor in regards to the manual access codes, the, the poll manager cards and using access codes, that they were not trained on that. In fact, the election supervisor did not send out those access codes or the instructions for those access codes until hours after the polls opened that morning. We want to make sure that the truth is, 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 is revealed and that the board meeting that happened two days ago or on Tuesday of this week, uh, they denied knowing of any issues being reported on the November 3rd election. And they also stated, the chairman of the board also stated that training procedures had been done since the November 3rd election. We know that not to be true. So here the voters are in a situation uh, that we find ourselves basically back to where we were November 3rd when the elections in Spalding County totally failed. With that, we'll be happy to answer any questions. They were cast, but they were not cast according to the rules and regs. The training is the responsibility of, well, not, uh, primarily the election supervisor, okay? But that is, that is the primary duty. And it's also the function of the governing authority, of, which is the local election board, to make sure uh, that the election supervisor carries out her duties. And they are um, the, the three members who have voted publicly to um, uh, uh, support her and gave her a vote of confidence this week 
uh, it is a response to their responsibility, and they are simply they're covering this issue up, and they're not addressing it. Well, how can they not? Yeah, we have. We're we're what uh, Monday was the official opening of early voting uh, in in the runoff election, and the poll workers still have not been trained on proper procedures. That is the primary responsibility of the superintendent, and it's the primary responsibility of the election board to make sure uh, that the, there's proper training all and up and down the system in order to make sure we have an election uh, that is that is fair, uh, and 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 the election is is shown and people believe in it. They believe in the integrity of it. We don't know because what we're seeing so far is, is and, and there's a whole host, as, as Representative Mathiak had, had mentioned, um, uh, chain of custody issues. We understand that the election supervisor uh, directly sent out people to actually go to the polls during voting day, before the polls were closed, to actually pick up voted ballots. That is not allowed. So I can't tell you if all of them were counted or not. Because if you don't follow the, the rules and the procedures and you don't have chain of custody as prescribed by the Secretary of State, how, how do you know if all ballots were counted or if they were not counted? I do not. All I know is that the Secretary of State says that there's logic and accuracy testing to be done before each of these elections, primary, you know, general and runoff. Um, it's open to the public, and then those machines are being sealed. And again, I'll point back to the Secretary of State, and it's been covered previously, I know in some of the media reports, uh, that the Secretary of State has looked at the logs, in other words, the, the logs that show who logged into these uh, uh, poll pads, and there were no logins after October 31st. So the story that the elections uh, supervisor and the chairman of the Spalding County Elections Board publicly made to you guys over multiple days that there was a last minute update is simply false. Well, I certainly think that, that what happened in Spalding County uh, and what we're uncovering uh, and as the Secretary of State's investigation continues will certainly be uh, uh, you know, at the forefront of what we're doing as far as looking at failures uh, in the system. And, and, and quite frankly, it's failure within people. We can write the best laws and the best rules, but if people simply do not follow them, uh, it's, it's you know, either via total incompetence or, you know, more than total incompetence, almost willful and you know, neglect. Um, I'm not sure what we do, and I think that's a big thing that needs to be looked at. Um, but back to your issue, I have voters in Spalding County, Representative Mathiak and I have voters in Spalding County right now. They're voting, and they're going, what's different now than was on November 3rd, especially if there was not adequate training which should have been done prior to the November 3rd election. David, speak to our poll managers, too, and now they're, they're wondering. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, are they? I did the poll managers, again, uh, yeah, well, they're, they're up under the supervision and, and, you know, the direction of the election su uh, supervisor. And, you know, they're given the training materials from her. It's her responsibility to do it. I understand uh, this morning, uh, that there was supposed to be a meeting and that uh, the election supervisors called that meeting off. Um, but again, I go back to um, we've got an issue. And I, I'm, I, I'm not sure at this point what we do. I know the House has made request of the Secretary of State and has further just absolutely uh, emphasizes the need for people from the Secretary of State's, the observers, not only observers, but people who understand the election, to go in there and observe and actually make sure that the rules are followed, are followed. 
and, and quite frankly, with the flagrant violation of the Secretary of Rules and Regs and, and, and Georgia law in this case, I can't help but think and wonder what other rules have been broken uh, that, that are not necessarily uh, those things that we see on Election Day, but what has been broken prior to that, all throughout the registration process, the, the absentee ballot process, um, Again, I, you know, I, at this point, I'm looking at all options. Representative Mathiak and I are looking at all options to try to make sure that the January 5th election is, 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 you know, is one that has integrity and people believe in it, and also uh, trying to figure out what we do going forward in regards to this election supervisor and the three members of the Spalding County Election Board that seem to want to cover this up and want this to go away, and they refuse to deal with it. Well, that's quite frankly, that's exactly what we're asking for is the resignation of the election supervisor. The, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, our constituents deserve better. They deserve excellence. And quite frankly, if it's happening in Spalding County, what other counties is, are, are they failing into? Um, it's about training, it's about custody, it's about the integrity of our election process that has been compromised. So thank you for being here today, and if you have any other further questions, we're glad to answer them. I don't know, I don't have the exact yeah. number, but uh, 40, 50,000, I think it was, I would think. somewhere around there. We'll, we'll get the numbers. By the way, um, we have, and in, 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 well, yeah, not only all, online, uh, the, the, you know, for y'all, we've got copies of the backup procedures that are in the manual, as well as links uh, that will be going out inside the press release today that will link you to the actual rule or training manual, uh, and also the rules and regs of the state regarding the logic and accuracy testing. So uh, they're very clear, they're very plain for anybody else to see. No, I don't, I, to my knowledge, I don't, I don't, I don't. You're not allowed to. Yeah, yeah I mean. You, by yeah. law, you're not allowed to have your phones in the polling areas. Um, the evidence that we have, the evidence that we have has have been signed into affidavit form. Our, our citizens know the gravity of them putting their signature on their stories. Our poll managers, our poll workers, our constituents that were voting on November 3rd. The integrity of Spalding County's election has been compromised and that's that Chairman Knight and I are, are challenged and charged with protecting our constituents and that's what we're here to do today. Thank you. Thank you.